chances are you may have some level of metabolic dysfunction and not even know it. Considering that 93% of Americans are metabolically unhealthy, we need to better understand this to understand our bodies, to understand the long-term implications, to understand it for our kids, and to understand how and what we can do to prevent and reverse it. And we're gonna talk about all that. But first, we need to define metabolism, which is not just something that when we were younger was fast and now that I've aged has slowed down. Metabolism is actually how we convert food energy into cellular energy that fuels us. Kind of important. And every input, I'm talking food, exercise, sleep, stress, either contributes to our health or to our disease. And we're gonna discuss the five biomarkers of metabolic syndrome in just a moment. Are y'all ready for a little biology 101? Because we need to lay the foundation first and I promise this will be painless. It all begins in the 40 trillion cells that make up the fabric of our being. We'll zoom in on the mitochondria or the powerhouse of the cell, as I'm sure you remember from fifth grade science. This is where the energy or ATP is made and no disrespect to our awesome science teachers because they have a lot to cover. But I believe this is largely glossed over because this is fundamentally how we function. And if our cells are not working properly, we may not be generating enough energy to allow us health or to allow us vibrancy in our lives. This brings us to the next vital player in our metabolic health, glucose. And glucose is the breakdown of carbohydrates or sugar into the bloodstream, which is why we also call it blood sugar. Now, our bodies like to be in balance and we cannot have excess glucose in our bloodstream or it becomes cytotoxic. Cyto meaning cell and toxic meaning poison. We need the glucose to go into the cells, liver cells, fat cells, and skeletal muscle cells. So how does glucose get into the cell? Enter insulin. Insulin is a hormone produced in the pancreas, and it's kind of the air traffic controller of glucose. Insulin is secreted in response to blood sugar in our blood. Every cell has insulin receptors, and this is the key to letting the glucose in, into the cell, where it's either used as energy or stored as fat. Knowing that, it makes sense that in our modern way of living in abundance and excess, why we are more overweight and more obese than ever before. And I'm not saying it's easy to turn down or limit the ultra processed foods that we are inundated with. I find myself going down the slippery slope of grabbing just one more packaged cookie or chips or my personal favorite, Little Debbie snack cakes. But this is leading us to metabolic mayhem. Let me tell you about Ben. Ben was a man who worked for my husband several years ago. He was a fun loving guy who loved hockey and beer and I think had been in a bar brawl or two in his time. He had a young daughter named Kara who was the apple of his eye and she was a phenomenal hockey player. Ben had made it very clear to my husband that the sole reason for his working for him was to be able to afford her hockey travel expenses and all the gear. When 2020 arrived, Ben got COVID. And what I didn't mention is that Ben was morbidly obese, had type two diabetes, sleep apnea, and hypertension. We had learned that he was in ICU and on a ventilator for just shy of two weeks until his body could not fight it anymore. And to this day, my heart still breaks for Kara, losing her father at such a young, young age. You may be wondering, Natalie, what does COVID have to do with metabolic health? And what I'm here to tell you is that COVID and every other insult a person could sustain, whether illness or injury, discriminates against those with impaired metabolic function. 
94% of COVID deaths had an average of 2.6 pre-existing chronic conditions, such as hypertension, obesity, type two diabetes, and many others that we discuss in depth in our episode on chronic disease. So let's get to the gold. How do we measure our metabolic health? Here are five biomarkers that we use to determine if a person is metabolically healthy. Number one, a blood pressure of less than 130 over 85. Number two, triglycerides less than 150. Number three, a glucose, fasting glucose, less than 100. Four, an HDL greater than 40 in men and greater than 50 in women. And lastly, waist circumference, less than 35 inches in women and less than 40 inches in men. Metabolic syndrome is having three or more of these biomarkers elevated. And we are seeing a rise in our teenage population of metabolic syndrome skyrocket. But please don't be discouraged because these can be improved in your favor with a few lifestyle changes. And I've seen patients turn things around as quick as two to four weeks with strong dedication. As I mentioned earlier, every input matters. Every input contributes to our health or to our disease. And this includes the food we eat, our exercise, our sleep habits, and our stress. We discussed sleep in our episode on chronic disease. And today I want to leave you with action items from our buckets of exercise and nutrition. In terms of cardiovascular exercise, we need to be getting 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise per week. This includes walking, running, swimming, biking, racket sports, and so forth. My focus today is on strength training, and we need to be getting two to three days a week of strength training in addition to that cardiovascular exercise. Remember earlier when we discussed how we want the glucose to get into the skeletal muscle cells? Well, guess what? Skeletal muscle is a glucose sink. 80% of glucose uptake happens here. And the more muscle you have, the more glucose can be stored as glycogen in the muscles for quick energy use. This is one of the many magical functions of muscle. As always, get clearance from your physician or provider and seek the expertise of personal trainers, physical therapists, or health coaches to show proper technique and programs that are appropriate for you. Lastly, what we eat matters. I just imagine our little cells doggy paddling, trying to keep their heads above water, trying to process all of the food and liquid sugar that we just continue to pour into them. The nutrition space is full of information. Some of it controversial, some of it incorrect, some of it very extreme. But what I want to leave you with today is practical and sustainable and will leave you feeling better and your biomarkers will reflect that. So in the words of the brilliant bioenergetics professor, Dr. Ben Bickman, control carbs, prioritize protein, and don't fear fat. Control carbs. We can look at healthy swaps, such as cauliflower rice instead of white rice, or my favorite cauliflower mash instead of mashed potatoes. Another trick is to choose your carbs wisely. Eat the things you really love and ditch the others. Oftentimes for me, that is ditching the hamburger bun in order for me to enjoy a handful of chips or fries. Two, prioritize protein. I know protein is a hot, hot take right now. We want to strive for one gram of protein per ideal body weight every day. So for example, if your ideal body weight is 150 pounds, yes, that means you are striving or aiming every day to hit that 150 grams of protein mark. I'm not going to lie. This is very doable, but it does take some planning and it takes some preparation. So just 
meal plan and also have some good quality protein snacks on hand. And number three, don't fear fat. And of course, Dr. Bickman is talking about healthy fats. We're talking about avocados, olives, fatty fish such as salmon. And honestly, most of us probably also need an omega-3 supplement. So please consider that if you're not already taking them. We will link Dr. Bickman's book, Why We Get Sick in our show notes. If you wanna take a deeper dive and a more scientific dive into metabolism and the root of disease. Implementing these healthy habits will pay off in terms of your metabolic health and how you feel in general. And you deserve to feel great. Thank you for joining me. And if you found healthful connections here, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend or loved one.